Today I'm going to cover track mat keys in Adobe Premiere. What they are, how to utilize them, some issues and errors you can get along the way, and how to solve it. Check this out. The track mat key in Premiere Pro is one of the handiest tools we have. It's an effect that basically lets another object, like a polygon, text, or even flames, control what is transparent or not in the base footage. Kind of like making cookies. The board is our background, and the dough, it's our footage. And the cookie cutter, that's our mat that we can place anywhere we want to on the footage to cut everything out of it. So how do you actually use a track mat key in Premiere? Let's use this example. To create a B-roll animation where I've got this rounded corners on all my B-roll footage and there's animation happening, I can't really use a traditional mask or crop for this because I can't get refined enough. So I'm gonna use a track mat instead. So on the timeline, I'm gonna place my background texture on V1, the board. Above that, I'm gonna place my B-roll shot, the dough, and on V3 is where I'm gonna place my mat. I can create this by hitting the Create New Graphic button in the Properties panel and use my Align and Transform properties to set the dimensions to 1920 by 1080. Align it in the center and then down here, I'm gonna add the degrees of the rounded corners. That's my cookie cutter. Okay, now to make this all work, I'm gonna to go to the Effects panel, I'm gonna grab my Track Mac Effect key and I'm gonna drag it onto the B-roll, not the mat itself. So there's a couple properties I need to fix here real quick. I need to tell it one, where to look for the mat, and two, what type of mat it needs to be. Before I do that, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. So the way this works is it's looking at an entire layer for the mat, not just one clip in particular. So I need to tell it that it needs to be looking at track three, the video track three for my mat. So anything that's on this layer, if I swap out my mat and put in something else, is gonna use that. Now I need to tell it which type of mat it's gonna be. And there's two options here, alpha and luma. So you use an alpha channel mat when your footage actually has some transparency built in already. There's already a part of it that seeps through. The second option is a luma mat. This is gonna use the brightness and darkness of the image to create the mat. Traditionally, white will show through and black will get cut out. And it even includes a gradient in that as well. You can see this in the gray square we've already created that the image is showing through, but it's at about 50% transparency. So we're gonna change this to white so it goes all the way through. Now there's two ways to adjust the sizing and placement of the mat, and you have to do these in two different places. First off, if you want to adjust where on the footage the mat is being created, you have to do that on the mat itself. Use the positioning and scaling to figure out where on this footage you want that to be. Next, you can adjust where that final image is going to look, where is it gonna be positioned and the scale, and that you're gonna do on the footage. But hold up, this is where things get interesting and potentially super frustrating. There's two areas where Premiere does some really weird things on my footage, and that is when I add transitions or when my footage is not the same dimensions as my sequence. To illustrate transitions, I'm gonna add a second B-roll clip here and I'm gonna copy over the motion controls and the track mat key effect so that these clips are doing the same thing at the same size. Now I'm gonna add a push transition for the two clips. And I assumed at this point, that's when I would need to add a push transition to my track mat as well to get that animation. But no, wait, check this out. When I play it back, you can see through the transition, it's keeping the track mat on both clips. Evidently, Premiere is adding the track mat key effect before it gets to position and scale and everything at the top. It's adding it to the entire image. That's why you have to move the track mat itself to reposition it on there. And when you affect the footage, that's what moves it all together. And this leads me to the second weird thing that Premiere is doing with the track mat. So this sequence is a 16 by nine aspect ratio and all my footage is also in that same dimension. But that's not what it does with a nine by 16 vertical video. So I'm gonna drop one on the timeline and I'm gonna add a new mask here that will fit vertically in the frame to add the rounded corners. Add the track mat. Look at what it did. It punches in a little bit. It resizes and crops it in this weird way, unlike the 9x16 footage. I'm not totally sure what's going on here, but it has something to do with the way that preview operates as well. If I select my vertical video in this sequence and I use the match cut shortcut, it's gonna pull up that source footage in the preview window. And you can see it's filling the screen and it's kind of cut off the sides. Now, if I go back to the sequence and I double click on it and it pulls up the preview window, you can see that it's zoomed in a little bit and it's doing something similar to what my track mat effect was doing. 
Somehow these two things are correlated. I'm not totally sure why, but I do have the solution. Take your nine by 16 footage, your vertical footage and nest it instead, then add the track mat afterwards. Then you shouldn't have any issues. And that is an exhaustive look at track mats. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe for more videos and tutorials like this.